Well, hello, everyone. Um, I'm delighted to be able to be talking with you today. And I'm going to be talking about online learning unboxed, a question of design. I've deliberately chosen to focus on the question of design because I think this is one of the most important considerations for us based on our COVID-19 experience and the rapid pivot to online teaching and learning. But before I say too much more, I should introduce myself. My name is Mark Brown. I'm a full professor of digital learning and director of the National Institute for Digital Learning based at Dublin City University, DCU, here in Dublin, Ireland. But I'm actually originally from New Zealand, if you um, have detected that my accent isn't Irish, and I've been living in Ireland for about seven years. Actually, one year ago, almost to the day, I was standing in front of the 800 delegates from about 80 countries as the chair of the World Conference on Online Learning that we hosted. And no one could have predicted at that time just how quickly online learning would become so important to our work and our ability to keep teaching and keep learning. Um, I also just want to alert you to a couple of resources that may be of interest before I get too much into my um, discussion. Uh, firstly, the Asian Journal of Distance Education. It's a free open access journal, has a really interesting article published about the middle of the year with 30 country case studies on how different countries and institutions responded to the COVID-19 crisis. I have a small contribution myself, but that may be of interest because there are publications from the Southeast Asia region. Secondly, um, my own case study refers to this initiative that my university and um, I was actively engaged in, working with the FutureLearn MOOC platform very early in the crisis, back in April actually, we developed and um, managed to offer an online course on how to teach online. This is still available. So far, almost 90,000 educators from around the world have um, participated in the course. Secondly, flipping from educators, more recently, back in September, um, I led the development of this free online course on learning essentially how to be a good online learner because we've learned how important it is to help our students to be effective learners. So that's a resource you may be interested in directing your students to. Um, we'll have another facilitated uh, offering of this in January. Okay, well, I talked about the focus on learning design. Well, why this is so important is I think what we know is that learning design that's rich and engaging for our learners really needs to be explicit and purposeful in the decisions that we make in what we decide we want our students to do, to know and to experience, that experience being very important. Um, and actually thinking about learning design, I want to underscore three core questions. In our designs, we need to understand who are our learners. We need to understand what are our learning intentions or outcomes. And then after that, we can decide what is the best design for our students and our intended learning outcomes. These are really the cornerstones of thinking about a good design, whether that be online or offline or a combination. Though it's a little more complicated because once we only had to think about that when we were designing for on-campus in-class students. This is the kind of uh, example I'm gonna share with you now of what I describe as the new digital learning ecology because we have to think about now our designs for learning out of class on campus or on site. These are just as important places and spaces where our learners do learn. But I think even beyond COVID-19, all four of these quadrants have to be considered and the leakage across them, if you like, in a digital sense. Now, off-campus in class and off-campus out of class are just as important places for students to experience their learning. There are frameworks that exist that try to articulate, particularly in online, the community of inquiry framework is one of the most common frameworks that exists. It's been around for a long time, but actually for non-educators or people who are not specialists in education and pedagogy, some of these can be a little overwhelming. So I'm gonna try and keep things as simple as I can in the remainder of this talk. 
when you're designing for learning, there are really three core interactions you need to think about. The interactions between the teacher and the learner, the interactions between the learner and the learner, and the interactions between the learner and the content in which they learn. A good learning experience is arguably going to engage all three of those dimensions, not just one, particularly not just the learner and the content. You could make it a little bit more complicated and say, well, there are different places for learning and there are different modes for learning and there are different paces for learning. We could add things to these as others have done. But again, I just want to be respectful of your context and not to overcomplicate matters as much as possible. But having said that, I'm going to flip and give you another kind of way of thinking about design. Because um, as you're doing now, hopefully you're learning by listening, or perhaps more accurately, I'm teaching by telling. That is one design, one pedagogical design in our pedagogical compass. But actually, a really good design is going to have the compass directions pointing more than just one way. It should engage learners in learning by making, learning by doing, and learning by sharing. All four of those dimensions should be part of your design. Some might be emphasized more than others. Not the teaching by telling alone, which ends up in the online world, in online teaching, being what I sometimes call as the pump, pump, dump model of online learning. Simply delivering content to your learners down a pipe into their head. That's the worst model of um, design. There are tools and frameworks we can help uh, our design uh, thinking with. And uh, this one is called the ABC Learning Design Framework. We use it in my own institution and it tries to break down the different kinds of learning activities. Um, and then you think very consciously and purposefully about your different experiences and how they touch upon these different types of learning activities from acquisition to investigation, collaboration and so forth. Um, but why this uh, whole field and the challenge of designing for online learning is so complex now, even though I'm trying to keep it simple, is we have many, many more tools than we ever used to, well beyond just the VLE or the LMS, Moodle, for example. And this particular article came out earlier in the year. Note the URL to the website you may wish to look at with a taxonomy of free web-based tools for teaching and learning. Um, so there are many more choices that we have available to us, sometimes too many. Actually, similarly, when it comes to the activities, there are lots of different activities that we can engage in. Sometimes it's just hard to come up with the ideas and be a bit creative. So this particular website has some very creative, innovative ideas for engaging learners. What you're seeing on the screen is just some of them. And you can see the um, link to the site that I invite you to have a look at. Um, so you can be actually much more creative than perhaps most people are, especially those who adopt the content delivered approach. Um, there are also frameworks for people in leadership roles, such as this embed uh, framework for blended education. This is for institutional leaders to think about what kinds of um, things they need to consider for designs at a whole of institutional or organizational level. But the embed framework also has a program level and a single course level. But actually the single most probably common framework throughout the world for answering the question, what does best practice look like in online delivery is known as quality matters. It comes out of the United States and it's a sort of rubric that you can use even to score your course. Um, it is a little US centric is the only thing I would say, but it's well worth knowing about as a checklist as whether you're in designing a course with all the components that perhaps you need. I want to finish, though, in the short time I've had here with three lessons, three takeaways, and it's just been so short, uh, I want to hopefully talk with you a bit longer on another occasion, perhaps. First lesson is, I've talked about some of these frameworks, but you can't just take something off the shelf and expect it to work just because it looks good. You need to customize it, make it local, make it relevant, particularly for your particular field, which is quite specialist. Um, so you can't think that there's a one size fits all model that's out there for online education. The second point I want to make is despite all the best designs and all the best resources and all the best tools, mindsets matter most. 
Yes, skill sets are important, but actually if you don't have the right creative and innovative mindsets with our educators, then you're just going to end up back with that old pump, pump, dump model of online education. So really invest in the mindsets, which is what you're doing right now on this event, this professional development um, day, if you like. My last lesson, finally, is that uh, to use and quote Diana Laurelard, who is the author of the ABC Learning Design Framework, using new technology to improve education is not rocket science, it's actually much, much harder than that. And I've probably given you a taste of how many different considerations you have to take into account, and I'm sure you've experienced just how hard it can be to design something that truly engages your learners in a rich experience. So I'll finish on that note, other than to share with you this resource that we have on online teaching um, in our National Institute for Ed, in, in our National Institute for Digital Learning uh, website. You can see again the URL there to go to. It's quite a rich resource, lots of things, probably too many things to explore. But if you do want to take some time and have a look at um, some of the ideas, I invite you to have a look at this site. So thank you very much. And I hope um, I've added something to your day and I look forward to hearing uh, questions and some comments um, in due course. Cheers.